Hello and welcome to episode 21 of my vlog. Let's get these out of the way, huh? Yes, today it's all about Blink Dogs. And yeah, I promised myself I wouldn't do another normal V intro, but this is the third one in a row now, so um, this might have become a thing. Let's see, right. So these are the WizKids Blink Dogs, part of their um, official D&D range that they've been doing alongside an official Pathfinder range and uh, their own sort of deep cuts, sort of, uh, shall we say, um, miscellaneous fantasy or sort of uh, more widely usable. There's a term for it and I cannot remember off the top of my head. So, yeah, these are those. What do we got here to show you? Well, these obviously right. So let's pick out let's put that one. And that one to one side for now. So these are the two stock models, unaltered, unconverted. Um, just painted up with my hand going across so you can't see them that well. And the lighting's probably not that great either. Yeah, uh, these are these are quite nice models. Uh, they come pre-primed, which is not necessarily a good thing. Uh, it doesn't really add anything. I haven't got a problem priming models myself. Uh, it doesn't help the undercoat stick or anything that I'm aware of. And you don't really get the full benefit of it anyway because you spend your time scraping off mould lines which scrapes off the primer layer. So uh, what's the point guys? What's the point? Also, in some cases, the primer goes on a little thick and you lose a little bit of detail, uh, which is a worrying thing. Uh, these, in fact, turned out to not be quite as detailed as I first thought when I bought them. They're alright though, they're not, they're not terrible, but um, especially around the head, um, the little details like the eyes and teeth are a bit smushy on these and I ended up... Um, having to be a bit creative with the paint to um, make sure that the eyes are there. Same with the teeth. Not, not ideal. These aren't the best miniatures I own. They're, they're by no means the worst. And they've painted up pretty reasonably. I hope the lighting uh, shows you that they've come out reasonably. So they come in packs of two and that's what two stock ones look like. Uh, these two I have converted by doing a head swap, just to give me a bit more variety. So, yeah, heads yellow around on these two, bit of green stuff to uh, remodel the neck. There we go. Not quite sure on the neck on this one. It, uh, let's, is focus about there? Yes it is. So, because of the extreme angle of the heads are at, I couldn't, on this one at least, get the neck to line up particularly brilliantly with the head. So he's got this kind of, um, kind of S-shape thing going on with his spine there. I'm not sure if that's a natural thing dogs or uh, supernatural dogs could do. I don't know. It's, it's not ideal, but I think I've got away with it. A simple bit of sculpting. Would you notice? I don't know. I think because I did it, I'm noticing it more. And this one came out a lot easier. Just a matter of filling the neck there. Try to match the sort of muscularity of the original sculpts into the neck. Uh, I'm not the best sculptor, but I think I got away with it. 
you tried to do sort of spine detail on the back of the neck there, uh, it came out actually quite reasonably considering. So yeah, there we are, Blink Dogs. This has been a five minute something video. Um, how shall I pad out time? Should we have them uh, teleport round a bit more? Mm, do you want to do that? Probably not. What can I do? Let's see if I have anything else to hand to show you. Let's uh, have these guys blink out. There they go, all gone. And I will go and find something else. How about we do something that arrived in the post today? So these are Greek uh, warriors of various kinds made by a company that makes stuff for gift shops and the company is called West Air. There are lots of miniature companies uh, with West in their name. This is one of them, although I wouldn't strictly call them a miniature company. They are they're a sort of a gift shop type company. They sell these and well sell they make these and key rings and so on of various historical periods and you, you'll find this sort of thing in museum gift shops. I live um, in Bath and in our gift shops here they tend to sell the Roman versions of these. Now why have I got these? Because they are not particularly brilliant miniatures. I'm going to open it up and show you because shiny packaging probably doesn't help. Right there. Let's do that. Get the card out. It's quite nice. It's got a sort of um, Greek fresco frieze type thing going on there on the background there. And it labels which each one is. Uh, so if I try and keep these in order, I can talk about what they are in a vaguely informed fashion. Right. So there we have the Antillean hoplites. A Cretan mercenary archer. These guys are not going to stand up on this terrain board on their own. Oh, there, you're going to fall. Take that, Crete. Right, uh, no offence to anyone in Crete who might be watching this. Is Crete still a place? I have not done any historical research before saying random things. Yeah, I think, I think Crete is an island still somewhere. Right, well, assumably near Greece. Don't, don't watch this channel uh, for historical educational stuff. It ain't gonna happen. Right, uh, can we trick you into standing up, Mr. Cretan Mercen Mercenary? Mercenary. No, it appears we can't. Right. Nope, ain't happening. Not happening, not happening at all. Uh, see, you just lie down over there. So, why have I got these? Well, they're, they're not to scale. This is, uh, see here, the Thief for scale. You see they're a bit taller. And the details are not brilliant. But, these make incredibly good statues. Oh, yeah, scale thing. This is how big they are, that big, in scale. And there's, see, obviously he's on a base and things fall over. Yeah, and what I do with these is I've got a set of the Roman ones, I've got a set of the medieval ones. Until now I would not got the Greek ones, because um, there's nothing Greek around here uh, to have a gift shop of would have a gift shop of Greek things. Uh, so I ordered this directly from the company through the post, which you can do as well, obviously, because I do not have unique mail or ring abilities. I am rather blathering on here, aren't I? Yeah, these make nice statues. They have arrived in the post. They are that big. And what I do with these is I get the old 20mm uh, Warhammer bases, glue them down, paint the whole thing up grey as stone and the base looks like a nice plinth and these make 
good little bits of terrain to put in your dungeons to sort of add a little bit of a theme to it so you can have sort of Roman inspired thing going on in your background you put down the Roman ones if you have a more medieval thing going down you put down the put down the medieval knights I've even got some although it's not really sort of good period for a fantasy game I've even got some Tudor ones somewhere that I haven't made up into statues yet I do not have those to hand to show you. What I could do though is I can see the box I've got the finished ones in so I might grab that quickly. There we go. It's gonna pause a moment. Right so here we have uh, some bloody Romans. Some of my favourites these because these are just uh, nice generic sort of temple statues. These can be gods or whatever. Uh, got yeah, Roman soldier there, and these are great. These medieval knights. And I'm going to wrap up the video incredibly quickly because a friend of mine has just come over, and in fact uh, interrupted my recording because I record this on my phone. So this is now two videos I'm having to splice together. Not that you'll notice probably. I'll tell you what. What I'll do is I'll put a really bad and awful transitional cut into this just to make it really obvious. I'm going to do that. Anyway, got to wrap up now because the guy who plays this character here has come over to discuss what's been happening during downtime and uh, he'll be buzzing at my door any second now. Okay, so I need a goodbye catchphrase.